Hello and welcome back to Tinker Talks Guns. This time we're going to talk about another cartridge conversion revolver. But first I'd like to say a special shout out to my supporters on Patreon. Uh, you really help make this happen because all this costs money and well, you don't have tons of that. If you'd like to join my supporters, there's a link in the description below. So, by the mid 19th century, Orrin Porter Rockwell had been a U.S. Marshal and a Salt Lake City Marshal, and he became the bodyguard of Joseph Smith, founder of the Mormon Church, and later his successor, Brigham Young. Um, officially was a bodyguard. Some characterize him as an enforcer, and given that his nickname was the Avenging Angel, there might be something to that. Orrin Rockwell was known for carrying a variety of snub-nosed cap-and-ball revolvers that had been customized for him that he called his Destroying Angels. Things such as this. And um, although he called them his Destroying Angels, the name Avenging Angel stuck for a snub-nosed cap-and-ball revolver. And we call them that to this day. This is not a cap and ball revolver, although it started life as a reproduction of one. This is a cartridge conversion that I did on an 1851 Navy reproduction. And to show you what I did to it, we're going to be going to the tabletop. After I finished the cartridge conversion on this revolver, I found this lovely wooden box at a Goodwill thrift store and refinished it and partitioned it to make a cased set, including a number of tools for the revolver. Here's the revolver itself. We'll get to that in a minute. With it are cleaning patches and a variety of tools and a place for ammo. And um, the tools include a rod for pushing out empty cases, a screwdriver, for disassembling the gun and a cleaning rod for obvious purposes. Also included are reloading tools. This block is for decapping empty cartridges in conjunction with this little pin, which you put the cartridge in, get this centered and tap it with the ideal reloading tool. This is an actual antique reloading tool for 38 Smith & Wesson, but it works just as well for the caliber of this gun, which is 38 Centerfire, which became known as 38 Short Colt, long after it had almost passed out of use, actually. <laughs> um, this is, now I make mine with 38 Smith & Wesson brass because it's easy. And it uses a 0.375 inch heel base bullet because 36 revolvers are 38 caliber for reasons. Um, the heel base bullets are 125 grains. These are externally lubed bullets from uh, Buffalo Shooting Supply, I think. I'm not sure. They're actually intended to be loaded into cap and ball revolvers but they work just fine in this. And the uh, I also have a powder scoop, which holds the exact correct amount of unique powder if I want to load these as smokeless loads. Um, I don't need a powder measure for loading them as, with black powder because you just fill the case with black powder and stuff the bullet in. And um, so this, once you've decapped around, and put powder in it, you seat the bullet, press it into here, and then squeeze it closed. And when you open it, this little hook pulls the cartridge out with the bullet in place. And it, for setting a primer, you put a primer in an empty case with no primer, put it in this hole, and then with the primer in place, and then push down on this and this little post seats the primer very nicely. It's actually surprisingly easy to use and gives quite good results. 
Now, on to the revolver. Let me get this stuff out of the way. The revolver is a little over six and a half inches long and five inches tall. And uh, the barrel, as you can see, is one and three quarter inches and uh, quite compact. And as you can see, I've busily fied the grip because I wanted to do something different with it and made custom grips in quilted maple. So, standard operation for a cap and ball or any single action Colt is you bring the hammer to half cock and then look through the loading gate. You'd actually open the loading gate on most Colt revolvers, but this one doesn't have one. It's really just a loading port. And you can rotate it and see that nothing in the chambers. Yeah, so it's typical for single actions of this vintage. You load a chamber, skip a chamber, and then load four more chambers. So when you fully cock it and lower the hammer, it's lowered on an empty cylinder, empty chamber rather, so that you can carry it safely without any danger of it going off if it's dropped on the hammer. The shape of this barrel is based on an actual antique that I found pictures of. And it's, um, it's quite stubby. Now, originally, this was a 44 caliber barrel. And um, there was never actually a real 44 caliber Navy. So I lined it with a section of turned down barrel from a 36 caliber revolver. So I'd have a nice 0.375 inch bore. And of course, in typical fashion, I chucked up the cylinder in the lathe turned it down, and then ran a reamer through it. And there is no step inside these chambers for the case slip because there's no case slip. Um, it's just bored straight through. And then I have a breech face, which is relieved to allow the this ring which is standard on the breech face of 1851 navies. And there is a firing pin affixed to the hammer that passes through a hole in the breech face. Reassembly is simple. Bring the gun to half cock. Insert the assembly. Place the barrel in place. And push the wedge in. And this one is barely finger tight, which is kind of nice. It doesn't come out and you don't need tools to take it down. So sights are quite simple. There's a post on the front and a notch at the top of the hammer. That is the rear sight. It's not much of a sight picture, but it does shoot reasonably well to point of aim. And this kind of flops around just a hair because I didn't get the clearance right on the back of the cylinder but the case rims keep it from being an issue or from rattling when it's loaded. My first ever handguns were all cap and ball revolvers, and I had quite a fascination with them. And when cartridge conversions became available, I leapt upon them with glad, glad cries, um, because it was the feel and the handling and the history of the cap and ball revolvers with the convenience of smokeless powder and modern cartridges. Now, I came to very much favor snubbies, so this was kind of inevitable. And uh, it is fun to shoot. Now, I try not to shoot it too much on indoor ranges because black powder and their airbag systems and cleaning systems don't like that very much. But uh, I still fire it once in a while and um, really works quite well and it's a lot of fun and it's an interesting conversation piece and range toy so I hope you liked the video if you're still watching I presume you did um, and if you did please take five seconds out of your busy life to click the like button because that helps the channel and it costs you nothing 
Also, um, if you want to see more videos like this and like a lot of other things, uh, click the subscribe button and hit the bell for notifications. Anyway, I hope this finds you well. Stay safe, take care, and I'll talk to you again real soon.